In today's gospel, Jesus gives us his final message, his final instructions, his final promise, and his final blessing to his disciples and to all of us. Jesus promises that I am with you always until the end of time. He is with us at all times and in all places, releasing the new energy of the Holy Spirit. Today's Feast of the Ascension is the celebration of Jesus' glory after his suffering and death, the glory in which we all share. Each Sunday we profess through our creed, he ascended into heaven. Christ's ascension is the culmination of God's divine plan for his son, Christ Jesus. It is the culmination, but not the conclusion. Thus, the Paschal mystery of Jesus' passion, death, resurrection, ascension, and the ascending of the Holy Spirit from one unbroken reality. Ascension means simply, Jesus is with the Father in glory. Jesus taught us lessons of faith, forgiveness, hope, mercy, redemption, and love. The disciples were charged to go out and preach what they had learned. In our lives, we may have to say many goodbyes. Colleagues who leave work, school friends, members of this parish that move away for jobs or for family, and friends who simply want to have a new beginning. Goodbyes are nearly always painful. Yet the disciples were joyous, no longer afraid, but joyous to be sent out on their mission across the many regions of the world to spread the good news. The ascension is less about endings and goodbyes and more about beginnings. It was the resurrected body of Jesus, a body that the disciples had touched, a body that they had ate and drank with, a real physical body bearing the scars and the point of a spear. The ascended Jesus defines for us a new beginning to our relationship with a very personal God a change in the relationship that the disciples knew well and we also know. So today we find a sense of purpose in our life and a sense of joy that can last a lifetime. Jesus wanted us and his disciples to finish what he had began, to be witnesses to other people and just as importantly to one another find our purpose in life, finish Christ's work. There was an Italian composer of many operas. Some of you may have heard of him, Puccini. He wrote La Boheme and Madame Butterfly, great operas. But perhaps his greatest he began during his battle with terminal cancer in 1922 the opera Turandot. He worked day and night and his sickness worsened and despite the prodding of his disciples that he was teaching about operas in the great works, he continued on. Puccini said to his disciples, if I don't finish Turandot, I want you to finish it. He died in 1924 leaving his work, perhaps his greatest work, unfinished. His disciples proceeded over the years to complete the project that he had started. The world premiere was performed at La Scala, the great opera house in Milan, Italy, in 1926. And his favorite disciple, Toscanini, conducted it. 
The opera went beautiful until Toscanini came to the end of the part written by Puccini. He stopped the music, put down the baton, turned to the audience, and announced. Thus far the master wrote, but he died. There was a long pause. No one moved. The opera house was silent. Then Toscanini picked up his baton, turned to the audience with tears in his eyes, and announced, but his disciples finished his work. How will we finish Jesus' work? Leave it unfinished or strive to finish the work of the Master? How will we be the disciples that Christ asked us to be, the disciples that are here and placed here in this time and this place to finish his work? his work that he started so many years ago with so few followers and so few disciples. We all need to concentrate on finishing his work. Today is Mother's Day, a day to celebrate and say thank you to all mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and aunts. And also why today we say a special word of thanks and send God's love to those who are not raising their own children, but are helping to raise everyone else's. They are not childless or child-free. No, they are special envoy moms, perhaps mothers without portfolio, but mothers at heart. Mothers at heart pray for many young women each year that they may grow in their relationship with Christ. They babysit for friends' children so they can have a night out and make meals for families in need. God calls all women to love, to be compassionate, be passionate, and nurture the people around them. But in today's society, who can mothers and women look to as the real model for motherhood? We need to look to Mary the mother of Jesus, our blessed mother, a true model for motherhood. On this beautiful day dedicated to motherhood, we contemplate that God is truly love. May we honor our blessed mother who first received love incarnate, her son Jesus Christ, and then gave him freely to all of us. May we all come to know his love today and forever. <laughs>